Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, we wake up here today in Swakopmund. It's a small resort town here on the west coast of Namibia. Uh, we're just uh, getting ready to go and have some breakfast and pack the luggage. We're actually going to uh, Omaruru today. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let's check it out. As usual, we woke up to Swakopmund under the fog, but we'll be out back into the desert soon again. It's the Zilia wreck, just a little bit north of Swakopmund. The Zilia got stranded on 25 August in 2008 in the early morning hours near Henty's Bay. The fishing trawler that was sold as scrap metal to an Indian company by Hangana Fishing of Alphas Bay got stranded after it came loose from its towing line while on its way to Bombay, shortly after it left Walfus Bay. It seems that they will be able to rescue no more than a few usable items from the stranded ship. Driving up north from Swakopmund, you see many fishing spots, and on the right, between the gravel plains, also some lichen fields. We left the coast and the cold and turned inland Direction Uis. We could still see the fog behind us and it became evidently hotter as we went further inland. Ram, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> Once everyone started heating up, we all pulled off the main road. This was a great place where we could enjoy some snacks and have a drink and really enjoy the scenery. Over these gravel plains you can see very far away. For instance, the Brandberg mountains over there is still about 170 kilometers away. Hey, in the distance we can see the Brandberg mountain, also called Burning Mountain. It's a granitic uh, intrusion out of the flat Namibians gravel plains. It's a very spiritual place for the Damara people. Uh, there is also where you can find the oh, white lady Bushman painting. Not sure how much you can see in the video but on that side is a uh, Spitzkopper which is some uh, granite rocks which uh, protrude up to 700 meters above the gravel plains. Now we're still on our way to Uis. An hour or so we'll be in Uis uh, for some lunch. Just right next to the Brandberg mountain. So here in the Omaruru district, getting close to Uis, in the distance you can see the Brandberg Mountains, the highest mountains of Namibia, at uh, 2,573 meters. Brandberg means burning mountain. It's because of uh, how the mountain looks when the sun is uh, setting. For visitors wanting to visit the Brandberg mountain, it's important to note that the mountains require appropriate preparation and caution due to the harsh desert environment and remote location. It's advisable to consult with local authorities, tour operators or experienced guides for information and assistance when planning a trip to the Brandberg mountains. It seems very busy here in this uh, little town of Uis at the moment. This town almost turned into a ghost town a couple of years ago. 
do céu. Is that they were uh, mining tin from here in the 1950s and then it became too expensive to uh, extract the tin so they stopped and the town almost became a ghost town but because of its location uh, tourism and so it's keeping it a little bit alive so there's a few restaurants a few gas stations and a few shops and guest houses who is is a small town in the Irongo region. The town is known for its historical significance in the mining industry. There's still some leftovers of the tin mining up there on the hill. It's probably still owned by one of the mining companies who extracted all of this uh, ground from the earth. Some bikers going. Today, Uis remains a mining town. Although its importance in the industry has diminished over the years, the mining activities in the region still attract some visitors interested in exploring the geological and mining history of the area. Omaruru is situated in a picturesque area, surrounded by the Irongo Mountains and the Omaruru River, which gives the town its name. Omaruru has a rich history and is known for its cultural heritage. The town was established in 1872 as a mission station by German missionaries. Today it retains its colonial charm with several historical buildings including the Lutheran Church, the Old Fort and various colonial era houses. The Omaruru River has its source in the Irongo Mountains located east of the town of Omaruru and runs for approximately 150 kilometers before eventually joining the Swakop River. The Omaruru River creates a lush corridor in an otherwise arid landscape, attracting a variety of bird species, wildlife and plant life. We finally arrived to Omaruru Game Lodge not far from Omaruru town. The Game Lodge has become renowned for its diverse and unique wildlife. It's located 15 kilometers from the town. The Omaruru Game Lodge. Beautiful rooms where we're staying. And then for sunset, they put some food out for the animals here by the water hole. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of what kind of animals you can find here by the water hole. Lots of animals. There's a big antelope coming here as a uh, Eland. There's some zebras, there's some water bugs, the ones with the rings on their backs. And there's even some uh, giraffe and kudu. And these guys on the tractor, they come and put out some hay for the animals. The highlight of the Amaruru Game Lodge is the wildlife spectacle directly in front of the restaurant terrace where various wild animals gather around the waterhole. It is a unique and unforgettable view to have these animals up so close. After dawn, the area of the waterhole is illuminated so that visitors will be able to watch the game during dinner. But, uh, tomorrow we'll be traveling further up north to Itosha National Park. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if you did, you know what to do, give me a like, and then, uh, yeah, then I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, see you next time.